Hey guys, Adam back here in the AeroWorks workshop and we just got back from the Zenith Homecoming in Mexico, Missouri. Man, was that a fun experience. My first time down there, got to meet a lot of cool people, uh, a, lot of, a lot of viewers, a lot of people that have been watching the videos. It's awesome to meet everybody. Met Fred and Bill and Mike and I mean, just so many different people down there. I can't remember everybody's names, but I really appreciate everybody watching and tuning in. Hopefully it's giving you inspiration or helping you out on your build, or maybe you haven't started your build yet. Uh, when we left the Super Duty build last time, we were uh, working on the controls, and then I ran into a little issue because I couldn't find a small washer that I needed for the uh, torque tube. Uh, I looked everywhere. I know I probably had it at some point, but you know, couldn't find it. Knew I was going to Zenith anyways, so I stopped in the office and stopped uh, and talked to Caitlin, and boom, she's got me the uh, washer I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up today uh, and get those controls in. Now, one of the things that we did while we were waiting for uh, the washer is I started doing the access panel on the right side of the fuselage. Now, this is a panel that's not necessarily required, but it does make it a little bit easier to access some of the items on the header tank for my engine, the Viking engine. So it also gives you a place for, to do inspections and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and work on that today as well. Um, and again, like I said, it was great meeting everybody. Um, I'm hoping that you guys are uh, enjoying your build and uh, that you guys picked up some tips and tricks from uh, talking to other builders at the Zenith Homecoming. So let's go ahead and do a quick overview of where we're at and what we plan on getting done this week. All right, well, starting up front here, we're gonna be uh, starting to get that hole put in for our engine access wiring. And we've got the uh, pass-through, this nice machined guy is gonna go right down here. And that's gonna carry all of our engine harness wiring to our uh, ECU. So this will all be going through the firewall and going through that nice pass-through, popping out down here. And then what we'll be doing is we're gonna pick up the uh, Viking uh, avionics tray and engine tray. So we'll have the two trays going across here. That way we'll be able to start laying out all of our electronics and getting that all done. Uh, the washer I was talking about earlier, of course that's the washer that goes right behind here. Uh, so we'll get that put in there. And then of course we were working on uh, the back area here, getting all the controls done, the torque tube, flap motor and all that installed. Towards the back here, we started laying out the uh, access panel. Uh, disregard all this tape going on here that's been peeled off and put on several times. But uh, we're using panels from Experimental Accessories. I'll put the link down uh, in the description below. They make panels for just about uh, anything you want. In fact, we're gonna be using their panels uh, under the wings. We've got some access panels here. I'll show you those in a later video that will be actually up here so to access fuel lines and power lines and things like that. Uh, but they make a bunch of pre-made, prefab kits, the, both the inner and the outer metal, along with the hinges and the doors and everything. And so we'll be uh, working on that and getting that cut in and drilled and riveted up. And then uh, we'll be finishing up in here, uh, double checking our control rods and getting those armrests riveted in and then uh, you know, finalizing all the stuff with the control stick. From that point, uh, we're gonna be working on hopefully getting our panels up front to support our panel, I should say our, uh, our shelves installed. We're gonna start working on avionics. Uh, picked up a bundle of, uh, got a thousand foot of wire from Aircraft Spruce, 18 gauge, so we can start doing all of our wiring, getting wire to where it needs to go for sensors and such. And uh, that's one thing I wanted to show you too that came in was our Dynon sensor package. And uh, let me grab the box and we'll go over that right now. All right, so let's check out these Dynon sensors. <clears throat> these are required for the Viking engine if you're using Dynon, of course. Okay, first off, we have four temperature probes. These are all the same part number. This is a Dynon 100. 409-000. These are, uh, they can really be used for any kind of temperature, oil, fuel, uh, coolant, uh, it doesn't matter. You can use them for anything. We're going to go through where they go and what they are for on my plane. 
but we have four of those. We have two oil slash fuel slash fluid pressure sensors. So four temp sensors, two pressure sensors. And these are the Dynon 103757-000. Again, same sensor used for two different things on this aircraft. And then we have a MAP sensor, so manifold pressure. And that's just a standard sensor, takes the input, turns it into digital, sends it to the Dynon panel. That particular sensor is a 100434-000. And I'm gonna put all of these in the description below. But let's talk about what we got here. So we have four temperature sensors. The first temperature sensor is for our coolant temperature. So we have a coolant temperature. We then have a gearbox oil temperature sensor. And then we have two intercooler uh, sensors. One is for the inlet temp, one is for the outlet temp. So that takes care of those. Our two pressure sensors, one is for our oil pressure and one is for our fuel pressure. So I'm gonna take you around the airplane and kind of show you where those go on the actual engine itself. All right, so let's take a look at sensor locations. Starting up front, we've got the gearbox here. We have our gearbox oil temperature. This is where that probe is going to go. Right behind that, we have our coolant and our pump here. And we've got another probe that's going to go right down there. You can see there's a little plug in there. That's going to be our coolant temperature. Over here on the right side, we've got the intercooler. We're going to have inlet and outlet temperature probes and they're going to be located on the front and back right there and right there that takes care of our four temperature probes let's swing around to the right side of the engine here and right down below the turbo you'll see that we have a plug right here that is going to be our oil pressure now our fuel pressure will be mounted back in here where the header tank is but it will be mounted in and to the fuel check valve block now this block here contains several ports on it it contains the inlet from the fuel the header tank the outlet for the engine the outlet for the pressure sensor and a, an overflow over pressure uh, feed line that goes back to the tank when the engine gets shut down. So none of these holes are specified for any one port. You can use any one you need to do it. They all interconnect, but you're going to be using the check valve with the fuel pressure sensor is going to go there. Then of course these wires tie to our engine monitoring system, which then ties to the HDX screen. So hope that spells out kind of what you need Dynon wise for a Viking 195 turbo. Now, like I said, I will put all these parts down below. Um, I want to say all of these parts, the two pressure sensors and the four temperature sensors were about three to four hundred dollars. That's current pricing right now, along with the map sensor. So map sensor basically uh, you just take any of the manifold uh, ports and you run a hose uh, up to that and then that goes into your uh, sensor package as well, the Dynon sensor package. So what I'm doing right now is basically drilling out all the holes up to A4 size. And I'm putting a lot of Clecos in here, especially on this hinge side, because I want to make sure the hole position stays nice and tight. I don't want any shifting in this. And I'll get all these drilled out, and then we'll remove it. We'll cut out our hole, and then we'll uh, match drill the holes in the other piece. And then we'll put it all back together and rivet it up.
right, guys. Well, that was a fun and quick little project we did. Got the uh, fuel inspection door put in. There's still a couple things I'll have to do here. Uh, there is a rubber trim that goes around here that keeps it nice and tight and also uh, gives it some water protection. Um, so we'll be adding that on, but we'll do that after paint. And then there's also a block that I'll be putting on the inside here so that when this latch goes, it takes up this gap here. Right now, um, it's not fully tight because that block is not in there. So once we get the block in there, that'll be nice and tight. And then we'll be moving on to the next project. Guys, I'm gonna keep these videos a little bit shorter. I know uh, sometimes the videos can get nine, 10, 15 minutes long, and I want you guys to stay watching the videos. So if you're liking what you're seeing, leave a comment down below. If you don't like what you're seeing, leave a comment down below. Uh, the, the most uh, aggravating thing is those people who thumbs down videos but are too chicken to uh, say what they feel. And uh, you know, doesn't really make a difference to me, but if you do have criticism, please leave it down below so we can improve the videos. If you don't like the video, tell us you don't like the video. Uh, and uh, go find somewhere else to watch videos. But for those of you who enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe, uh, or just watch the videos, that's great too. And uh, if you have something specific that you'd like to see, leave a comment down below, let me know what you're thinking, and uh, we'll be on to the next project. We're gonna be finishing up the cabin here, and I'm gonna try and put out the videos a little bit more frequently, maybe keep them shorter and do a little bit more frequent. Uh, that way we'll get more content pushed out as quick as we can. So guys, it's Adam again, Arrowworks Workshop, and uh, building the Super Duty. Thanks for watching.